वेरी गुड इवनिंग तो वी थैंक और लॉर्ड फॉर गिविंग गेट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू स्टडी इज वंडरफुल वर्ड्स ऑफ लाइफ सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अ पैरेबल दैट वाज स्पोकन बाय आवर लॉर्ड जीसस क्राइस्ट वी नो वेरी वेल दैट जीसस स्पोक मेनी पैरेबल्स एंड विदाउट अ पैरेबल ही नेवर स्पोक एनीथिंग ही स्पोक एंड जनरली जीसस आफ्टर स्पीकिंग दिस पैरेबल एवरीबॉडी he usually explained the clear meaning of the parable particularly to the disciples so today we are going to study one parable that is mentioned in the book of uh, luke so it's in luke 15 chapter verse 8 and 9 can somebody read luke 15 chapter verse 8 and 9 luke 15 chapter verse 8 and 9 can somebody ramesh sir can you read Okay, brother. He then watched a woman having ten pieces of silver. Um, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till the till she find it, and when she hath found it she collect her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for i have found the peace which i had lost very good sir thank you so here jesus spoke a parable where he said the woman having a 10 pieces of silver You see, and if she loses one piece, uh, does she does she not light a candle and uh, completely sweep the house and seek it diligently until she finds it? Uh, and after she has found it, uh, you see, she calls all her friends and neighbors and tells to rejoice uh, with her because she has found the lost coin. Dear brethren, just imagine, you see, uh, if these things uh, literally happen. You see, practically, does it happen? You see, because ten silver coins, uh, you see, were there, and uh, this woman lost uh, one of the ten uh, silver coins. Uh, you see, and as she lost it, uh, she became so tense uh, that uh, she made her house uh, upside down. It seems uh, she began to light the candle. You see, and uh, searched the entire house uh, until she found the lost coin, and. She began to sweep also. You see, because she could not find it, she began to sweep or uh, make it clean until she got the coin. Once she got the coin, you know, she immediately rejoiced. Uh, so so happy that she found the last coin. Imagine, dear brethren, you see one coin. Imagine if we have uh, ten coins with us. If we lose one coin. Will you do the same thing? Just because the search on coin, will you make the house upside down, clean everything, light a candle, and search it? The cost of the candle itself is way more than uh, the you see the silver coin. But here, yeah, you see that that uh, woman, you see, was so careful and so much worried about the lost coin. But as soon as she found it, she not only rejoiced but called all our uh, all our. Uh, Friends uh, and neighbors. Imagine if you lose one coin and if you search that coin and after getting that coin, if you go and uh, tell this one to all our friends and all our neighbors, uh, what will they do? They will really laugh at us and say, "What a joke!" Ah, uh, you see, why is so much serious about a coin that is lost? Uh, you see, and as soon as it's got, uh, you went and told everybody. You see, so. Nobody would uh, really take it uh, in a serious way. Everybody will. Uh, they won't rejoice with us, though we might be rejoicing. Uh, you see, and they will think uh, he is really a fool. Uh, you see, then what is the meaning of this one? You see, what Jesus spoke here uh, is a parable. Uh, you see, and Jesus uh, through this parable actually was trying to teach some important lessons to the church. 
And what are the lessons? Uh, let us read Matthew 13, chapter 34 and 35. Okay. Uh, Munna Sita, very good that you joined today. Uh, are you able to read the Bible? Can you read Matthew 13, chapter 34 and 35? All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parable, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parable, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Ah, so yeah. Jesus uh, spoke in parables and he tells what is the purpose of the parable and what is there actually in the parable. He says, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things uh, which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Uh -huh. So Jesus actually was speaking so many secret things which were hidden from the foundation of the world. This one he brought it light to his disciples. Hence, uh, in Matthew 13 chapter, you see, in the same chapter, Jesus tells, uh, who can understand this parable? Uh, let us read, uh, Munastra, please read Matthew 13 chapter, verse uh, uh, 11, 10 and 11, verse 10 and 11. Matthew 13, which verse, brother? 10 and 11, sister. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parable? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Mm, so, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. So, in this parable, the thing that was kept secret from the foundation of the world was revealed. That means about what? About the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So, something related to the heavenly salvation, something related to the church must be in this parable. So what is the meaning of this parable? Now we will try to decode the meaning of this parable. You see, whenever Jesus spoke something, he spoke actually related to some natural things that were usually happening in Israel. So even this parable also, it actually is speaking about a custom which actually happened in Israel. You see, we have seen the parable of the wheat and tares. You see, Jesus saw the wheat field and took a lesson from it and spoke the parable of the wheat and tares. You see, so similarly, you see, the parable of uh, 10 silver coins, Jesus was actually speaking about the custom of marriage in Israel. You see, in Israel, the custom of marriage was that uh, they used to have, uh, you see, engagement. And after nearly one year of engagement, uh, they used to have a marriage ceremony. So in that one year time, it was given for the bride and bridegroom to understand each other and love each other. You see, so they may develop that affection upon each other. And after one year itself, you see, the marriage was actually taking place. You see, so in this time, if there is any, you see, uh, a problem, they could be able to understand each other. You see, hence, this one year period was like a testing period to prove, to check if really the bride, you see, really loves the bridegroom. You see, so hence, uh, what they used to do uh, during those period is that uh, as a token of, uh, uh, you see, the uh, love, the bride, uh, groom side, used to give some, you see, things uh, for the bride to maintain it uh, very diligently. Like, for example, we studied in the church class uh, about uh, some Spotify, where a bride was given a white robe and she was decorated completely with, uh, you see, uh, work of a uh, needle, uh, decorated with a uh, golden thread. So, 
That was actually the custom in Israel. They used to give a plain clothes, white robe, you see. And the bridegroom had to decorate it uh, with, uh, you see, a golden uh, embroidery work she has to do in that one year period. So her own wedding dress, uh, she has to stitch it of herself. Uh, so after one year, the bridegroom comes and sees uh, that the dress is very grandly decorated, uh, nicely decorated and uh, embroidered with good needlework and all. That was a sign that the uh, bride uh, really loved the bridegroom. If it was not decorated, it was least decorated. That was a sign to identify that the uh, bride did not love the bridegroom. So similarly, you see, even uh, nowadays uh, we have the custom in so many places. Uh, as a token of engagement, they put the ear, ear, finger ring, uh, they give earring or bangles or something like that. Uh, you see, and uh, if uh, uh, the bride removes the finger ring, uh, engagement ring, that means uh, she has cancelled the uh, engagement. Uh, imagine if uh, somebody has cancelled uh, that engagement, uh, engaged girl, will somebody marry her? No, definitely not. Nobody would uh, definitely come to marry her because everybody will put a question why she is cancelled, what happened, some problems, uh, they will cancel it. All these speculations will come. So, similarly, even in this incident also, you see, <clears throat> it is very, very important. Therefore, you see, we also have studied the, the parable of the 10 virgins. You see, where the 10 virgins actually went to meet Jesus Christ. So, virgins, you see, so they were, uh, you see, getting prepared uh, for the marriage. So, here, in this uh, parable, uh, Jesus was spoke, speaking about 10 coins. So what is 10 coins that the uh, bride uh, used to receive from the bridegroom means? Uh, along with our bride uh, dress, uh, the bridegroom used to give 10 silver coins. And it was upon a string which they had to place upon the head during the day of the marriage. You see, it was uh, it can be placed like medals uh, and it could be removed also. And it was the duty of the bride to keep these coins very carefully. You see, and uh, if she loses one of the coins, then that means uh, it was the very rarest of the rarest uh, cases that the marriage would happen. And there's a very severe danger that the marriage will get cancelled. So our marriage is to depend upon these coins. You know, if somebody's marriage is cancelled, you know what does it mean? It means almost like spoiling her life. It was actually a matter of life and death. It was actually a matter of life and death. So that woman had to be very, very careful. Therefore, as soon as uh, that woman, you see, lost uh, her coin, what did she do? She turned the house upside down. Why? Because soon the news would go to the bridegroom. They would cancel the marriage. Then she began to search it, search it, search it. As soon as they got, uh, she went and informed first to her, her friends. Uh, why friends? Uh, because friends would be the first one. To give the negative report whether the bride has lost the coin or not. And similarly, she also called all her neighbors because who knows which neighbor is going to come at the negative thing. So once if she informs, that was a clear sign that uh, you see uh, that uh, she has maintained uh, correctly all the coins. Okay. Now what is the meaning of this one? We know it very well. We said who is the bride and who is the bride going? Isn't it? We know it very clearly from the scriptures. Who is the bride? Who is the bridegroom? Huh? Who can tell? Who is the bride? Wait, everybody are there. Anil Brother. Church. Church. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus Christ. Very good. Read 2 Corinthians 11 2. Uh, Sarita Star, can you read Second Corinthians 11 too? For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 
Ah, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. I have exposed you to one husband, engaged you to one husband. So the church now is engaged to Jesus Christ. So there is a gap between engagement and actual marriage. When will the actual marriage happen? Actual marriage will happen after the completion of the church. When Jesus comes, the church will be complete and the church will be gathered together with Jesus. That is the time that the marriage happens. Read Revelation 19, 7. Revelation 19, 17. Uh, 19, 7, Revelation 19, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Oh, the marriage of the Lamb is come, the wife hath made herself ready. She is readily decorated with the gown. The church has to be neatly decorated with Christ's likeness, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You see, she has to have this ten silver coins. Now what are these 10 silver coins? What is the meaning of silver in the Bible? You see, silver in the Bible means truth. Read Psalms 12, 6. Uh, Joel Brother, can you read Psalms 12, 6? The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a Pronouns of earth purify seven times. Ah, the word of God is pure. It is like a silver that is tried in the furnace of the earth. Seven times purified. So God's word is the silver. You see. Then, ten silver comes in water. You see. Ten important truths in the Bible. There are ten important doctrines which uh, a Christian, if he wants to be the bride of Jesus, he has to always have it in his head, in his mind, in his heart. What is that one? John 17, 17. Anil brother, please read John 17, 17 brother. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Yes. Sanctify, purify them. By thy truth, thy word is truth. So God's words is truth. Now, there are ten important doctrines at the first event of Jesus. But what happened then? Slowly, as all the apostles slept, you see, they all died. What happened? The church lost a very important coin. Very, very important doctrine in the Bible was lost because of which all the other coins were useless. See, if she might be having nine coins, but because of one coin, she won't be getting married. All the coins were interrelated and they were important. So, when did the church lose this coin? It was in the dark ages. You see, we are studying about the period of Antichrist. In the Antichrist period, this coin was lost. Okay, what happened there? The woman searched her, cleaned her house, completely made it upside down. House means what? Household of faith. House means house of God. The church. She, the church has lost it. So, she began to search it. Where did she search it? Did she search it in any temple or some other place? No, she searched it in the same house where it was lost, inside the church. You see, and that happened during the Reformation. She swept the house. Reformation, what happened? All the major wrong doctrines uh, which are taught by the great Antichrist, the Roman Catholic system, was cleansed uh, slowly. How? By not only sweeping, you see, lighting the candle. Now, what is the meaning of candle in the Bible? Candle means God's words. Read Psalm 719 and 5. Uh, Amar Buddha, can you read Psalm 719 and 5? Psalm 719 and 5. Amar Buddha, you there? Yes, Buddha. Psalm 719 and 5. 
Thy word is a lamp onto my feet and and a light onto my path. Uh -huh. Thy word is a lamp onto my feet. Uh -huh. Lamp, light onto my path. So the church began to diligently search from the Bible. So then they began to search because the Lord is calling. As soon as they got it, what did some woman do? She rejoiced. Called her friends, uh, told her also re to rejoice with her, uh, and called uh, the neighbors also. So, this truth is very, very important. So, let us see which are these 10 silver coins uh, and which was the one truth that was lost. Okay, the 10 silver coins are 10 important truths. So, the first uh, important coin you see is. Uh, the creation of God. You see, the creation of God, and that is a primary important coin. See, how was man created? Man was created in the image of God, in his own likeness, and God had given him the dominion of everything. So, man, how was he created? If you see, he was created from the dust of the ground in the image of God. But today, what does the scientist believe? Scientists believe that, uh, you see, man came from uh, the evolution. He came from, uh, you see, amoeba, a cell, and slowly developed uh, into, you see, monkey, chimpanzee, gorilla. Now, man has come to perfection. So, he has come from Stone Age to Iron Age and to the, you see, computer age. This is what the scientists believe. You see, so man has been developing, uh, you see, evolving, uh, they say, from where? From uh, nothing to computer uh, because of Darwin's theory. But uh, uh, this question, Darwin also cannot not understand and cannot answer. What is the question is, you see, if man never came from a ape, uh, no, why doesn't the ape develop into be a man? Why today man is coming from man? Man could have evolved even today from an ape, no? Why man is not getting developed further? This question, a scientist doesn't have any answer. You see, because uh, they say there is a missing link. When there is a link, uh, huh? when there is, first of all, there is no link, uh, how can you miss it? Uh? There is no link at all. You see, they tell that man is developing. Uh, you see, compared to the days of creation, he was nothing, he was created in the Dhammar. And not only is developing, but what does the Bible say? The Bible says that man was created in the likeness of God, in the image of God. Read Genesis 1, Genesis 1 26. Genesis 1 26, uh, Joel Brother. And God say, said, Let us make men in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea ah. and over. See, what does he say? Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. That means he, God, created man perfectly. No, man was created imperfectly, without any intelligence, like a dumb man. You see, no. Early man, when he was created, he was perfect, holy, sinless. He was very, very wise. He was very intelligent. What did Adam do in Garden of Eden? Who can tell me? What was the work that God gave to God, Adam in Garden of Eden? You are all there. Tell me, what was the work which Adam did in Garden of Eden? Nobody knows, sir. Huh? Nobody knows, sir. Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden, you see, to do farming. So he was the one who was actually taking care of the Garden of Eden. Read Genesis 2.15, brother. Your brother, read Genesis 2.15. Hmm. 
and the Lord God took them, took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it and keep it. Uh, that means Adam uh, would definitely be a wise man. It would be so neat and so clean. Whatever beautiful park we have seen today, that is nothing before Garden of Eden. And what does today do in Garden of Eden? He named all the animals intelligently. You see, read it was 19, brother. Huh? Read it was 20. 20. 19, and, huh? 19 and 20? Huh? Only 20, read. Only 20? First chapter, no, brother. Second chapter, only verse 20. Okay. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fall of the year of the year hmm. and to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found and help meet it, for Adam him. gave name for all the animals, birds, uh, that means uh, any you see, uneducated or what is the illiterate person can he give uh, huh? names to all animals. Uh. He is a very wise person. And moreover, during those days, uh, the people were very, very, you see, wise. Uh, you know, Kain's brothers, uh, Tubal, Kain's sons and generation of Kain, Tubal Kain, Jubal Kain. What were they doing? Uh? They were inventor of all the music equipments. Uh, you see, all the great cat music equipments were given to my own. Tubal Kain, Jubal Kain. Okay? And now, what did he build? He built an ark 150 feet. Imagine 150 feet means what? Huh? Much uh, larger than a uh, Boeing jumbo jet. Isn't it? Very huge. This one he had, uh, you see, uh, created. Uh, you see, built it. Okay. Now, when Noah built the ark, why did not the water enter the ark? Why water did not enter the ark? Who can tell me? Anil, tell me, why did not the water enter the ark when Noah had built it? Anil, brother, is it? Yes, one second, brother. When Noah built the ark, the flood came. But the water did not enter the ark. Why? Ark. Not... Correct now, see, he built a boat, correct now, a ship. Yes. How did he not go inside the ship? Why? What did Noah use to prevent the water from entering the ark? Okay, any other okay. Tell me, tell me. Tell me. Oh, no, I don't know, brother. I don't know, okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Um... I think oh, God yeah. himself closed that door. Uh -huh. Ark door. Yeah. yeah. And all the all the instruction is given by the God. Okay. So what material did he use? Um, Let us read Genesis 6. Good, good attempt. Genesis 6 14, brother. Genesis 6.14. Anil Buddha read. Genesis 6.14. Make thee an ark of gooper, gooper wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Ah, pitch. What do you mean by pitch? You know, what is the pitch? Could have, what did they put for the road? Huh? What did they put for the road? Yeah. Huh? Correct. What was that? Mm, I forgot. Black. Huh? Star. Yes. Black. For construction of road, they put tar now. Black color. Yes. That is what Noah used there. See, we think that uh, no, the star was invented recently. It was there in the first world itself. See, Noah has used it to pitch the heart. That is the reason even a drop of water did not enter the heart. Imagine, it came from monkey. Huh? Evolution. 
<laughs> it's not evolution. They were all very smart. Uh, but today, man has fallen and degraded into sin. That he has become more corrupt than the virgin even was created. Uh, and uh, you see, pyramid, who built it? Uh, you see, Job or Melchizedek. How is the pyramid? Uh, even with modern equipments, nobody can duplicately build a pyramid at all. Even with high-fi technology and engineering, you can't duplicate it. Such is the wisdom of man he was created. So man was virtually created, wonderful love, you see. So this evolution theory, you see, is wrong as per the Bible. So the creation of man is very, very important coin. Okay, now which is the next coin? You see, the second coin is related to the first coin, death. Aha, uh -huh. what is the wages of sin? You see, the wages of sin is death. What did God tell to Adam? God told to Adam, you see, you shall not eat the fruit thereof. In the day you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. But what is said and tell them? Huh? You shall surely not die. You see, so since then, he has been very busy deceiving the entire mankind, uh, saying that you are not actually dead. Uh, you are... After your death, you are there, here, and all those things and all, you see. And uh, this death passed upon everybody, and everybody was condemned to death in Adam. Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12. Uh, can you read Romans 5.12? <coughs> Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Okay. Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world. Because only one man the sin came into the world, and God knew that all persons would sin because of lack of experience. So hence, God condemned everybody to death in Adam. So everybody are dying in Adam. The wages of sin is death. Small, small children that die as soon as they die. You see, why? The mother, the parents put the question to God. The Bible says they are all condemned to death in Adam. That's the reason David said in Psalms 51 5, I was shepherd in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Everybody, even before they are born, they are born with a death penalty. You see, death, death is a penalty. Not that after death, what will happen? Your soul will come out, your soul will roam here and there, it will go to hell, heaven. No, no, no. If that was the case, God would have clearly told. He has told so many things clearly. Why fear to tell about these things? You see, the Bible clearly says the wages of sin is death. You see, the serpent was the one, the Satan was the one who told the lie. First time the God of illusion, surely not die. So, since then, he is busy deceiving everybody to prove that death is not death at all. So, man doesn't die at all. So as soon as he dies, he goes to, you see, hell or heaven. His soul is immortal. You see, it will go to uh, Paramatma and be with God. You see, all these concepts. Uh, this is all the great deception of the devil. So the second coin use the penalty, the death. Okay. See, the third coin. What is the third coin? The third coin, you see, dear brethren, it is the ransom. The thing that is related to the Second coin, it is because of death was the penalty. Jesus had to come and die for us on the cross to redeem us from the death. You see, and Jesus gave a ransom for all. And because of that one, there is a beautiful opportunity that all that are in the graves shall come back to life in God's kingdom. Read John 5.28. John 5.28. Buna Sister, can you read John 5.28? Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. You see, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. You see, the so time is coming up. That is the reason Jesus gave a ransom for all. We should read the subject about ransom, 1 Timothy 2nd chapter 3 to 6. The Greek word for ransom is 
Antilutron. Antilutron means what? The corresponding price. Jesus has paid the, the corresponding price for Adam. He did not pay for each and every individual person. Adam was the one who sinned. So Jesus should be redeems Adam. Through Adam, the entire generation will be redeemed. So Jesus is not only a savior for Christians, he is a savior for the entire mankind. When Jesus died, there were no Christians at all. He died for mankind. So through the death of Jesus, all mankind shall be saved. You see, so see the coins, they are all interlinked. As the woman put the coins on a string, everyone next to each other. So similarly, what is there? The creation is interlinked to the penalty, penalty is interlinked to the redemption, that means the ransom. So everything is interlinked. Now the fourth point is justification. Uh -huh. Justification by faith. So as we were all sinners, we had no standing before God. But because of the death of Jesus and because of believing in the blood of Jesus, we can now approach God and stand in front of him, you see, as a sinless person. It is only of his grace. Romans 1.17. Romans 1.17. Romans sister, can you read Romans 117? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the, ju the just shall live by faith. Uh, the just shall live by faith. You see, not by any deeds, uh, any deeds to please the Lord. No, it is only by faith. You see, therefore, this one was attained by faith. You see, we don't really become uh, perfect before God's sight. Uh, but believing in Jesus, God considers us that we are sinners no more. You see, it is not uh, justified because of confession of our sins. We are not justified by something of the deeds which we do to please the Lord. It is only of His mercy that God has justified us. See, all our, uh, our uh, what you say, the robes, were as filthy rags. We had no standing before God. But God has clothed us with the robe of righteousness. You know, actually, the Pope had removed this one totally. You see, they claim uh, that uh, all your sins should be confessed to the Father. You should, you should pay. This is so much of offering. Take indulgences. Uh, then so your soul should be redeemed. But uh, Martin Luther was the one who found this coin and totally declared that the teachings of, uh, you see, in the great uh, Roman Catholic system were wrong. So Martin Luther was a... Uh, Monster, so the father of uh, reformation who brought this thing to light. Okay, the fourth one over. The fifth one is just sanctification. You see, fourth one is the justification. Okay, receiving forgiveness for our sins. Sir. Now, after receiving the forgiveness of sins, sir, you see, what a person should do is uh, consecrate himself. That means immerse himself in proper water baptism. In Christ. You see, not taking baptism for the forgiveness of sins. No, baptism is not for the forgiveness of sins at all. We will seek another one in the coming days. Baptism means consecrating to the Lord. Baptism means offering our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Romans 12.1. Uh, Surita Star, can you read Romans 12.1? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Ah, you see, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Then only the person becomes the follower of Jesus. You see, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, is a reasonable. Service people. That is the covenant which uh, man makes with God. Not God makes with man. You see, God calls man to make this covenant, but we need to make this covenant with uh, God. You see, read Psalm 15, verse 5. Psalm 15, verse 5. Psalm 15, verse 5. 
Anil Gudar, read Psalms 50, verse 5. Gather and sense together unto me those that have made a covenant with me, me by sacrifice. See, gather my saints. These are the true church. Those who made a covenant with God by how? By sacrifice, offering their bodies as a living sacrifice. You see, with this idea, you see, the baptism has to be taken properly. That is the correct immersion. You see, therefore, the brethren, we should read about the church. You see, in that, what do you see now? Plain R, plain N, you see, and plain uh, M. You see, the entire mankind, you see, are now on plain R, sinful plain. By believing in Jesus, man becomes uh, justified in God's sight. But that is not sufficient. Be a good believer. We need to be the followers of Christ. Followers of Christ means that uh, Jesus immersed himself properly in water baptism. Similarly, we also need to immerse ourselves into the death of Christ. Okay. Now, this is the, you see, the fifth coin. Now, which is the sixth coin? The sixth coin is election. You see, election is what? Election means, uh, you see, a person is selected uh, even before uh, hmm, he is born. Some people believe that even before we are born, we are chosen from the foundation of the world. You see, and some people also believe the lack and 40,000 mentioned in Revelation 7, chapter 40, chapter, they're all chosen before the foundation of the world. So there is no need for them to do anything. You see, what did Jesus say? Read Matthew 22, 14, brother. Matthew 22, 14. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read Matthew 22, 14? For many are called, but few are chosen. See, many are called, few are chosen. Chosen means what? There are many people, many are called, few are chosen to go to heaven. No, no, not chosen to go to heaven. God has chosen us in Christ to have a certain bit of qualifications. Not that you just qualify to go to heaven, just like that. Then why did the Bible say that you should work out your salvation? The qualifications of the faithful church. This is chosen before the foundation of the world. Read Ephesians 1.14 also, brother. Ephesians 1.14. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ah, we should be. How? We should be holy, without blame, in love. This character is quite, is prefixed uh, even before the selection of the individual. So the church is not called individually, not selected or fixed individually. But the qualification of the church is fixed. Now what is the real qualification to be of the faithful class? Uh, to read with Christ. Uh, you know what is the one? That is image of Christ. That is the reason. God has called us to grow into the Xerox copies of our Lord. Romans 8.29, brother. Joy, brother, please read Romans 8.29 also. For whom he did for, uh, for a no, he also did pre predestinate uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among Many brethren. You see, whom did he predestinate? He confirmed them to the image of his son. Zara's copies of Jesus. This is the reason God has selected the church. You see, to reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay. Now, that was the sixth coin. Nobody is selected from the birth. Okay. Now, seventh coin. The seventh coin was about the truth about our God. Now, who is our God? How many gods do we have? Who can tell me? How many gods do we have? One, two, or three? Or three in one? Only one. One. Mm, only one God. You see, there's only one God. And one mediator between man and God. That is man Christ Jesus. You see, we don't have any multiple gods. Sir. Read 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 5 and 6. Sir. 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 5 and 6. Munasitor, can you read it?
For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, that we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things that, and we by him. Mm. There are so many gods and lords in this world, no doubt at all. But for us, how many gods is there? One God, Father of all. And one Lord Jesus Christ, you see, and who is our master. So both are separate, not both are one in the same way. So this one you studied in detail about the Trinity class. You see, so our God has got four important characters. We are seeing this one, uh, Revelation 4 chapter, uh, pictured by the, you see, lion, face of a man, flying eagle, and a calf. That means uh, power, love, wisdom, and justice. So, God has his four characters which uh, works uh, all together. Okay, our God is not a trinity God, our God is not a trying God, three in one God, or one in three God. Our God is the one God. And Jesus is his son. Okay, now let us come to the eighth coin. You see, this is the eighth coin. That is the Jesus second advent. You see, so we have recently just now only studied the Jesus second advent. The whole world is believing that Jesus is going to come, come, come. When it will come, you see, when we ask, we say, he will come very soon, very soon. But we have already seen that he already come very soon. <laughs> then uh, rather than the expectation from Jesus, of the church, Jesus is already present. You see, what does uh, the Bible say? That Jesus will return from heaven with a shout of the archangel. That means the trump of God, when the last seventh trumpet blow, Jesus' presence was there. We have seen this one in detail in the same coming. How in Revelation, uh, you see, the uh, Bible speaks about seven trumpets, uh, seven churches. When the seventh uh, trumpet was blown, the kingdoms of this world were transferred to Jesus Christ. Read Revelation 11.15. Anil, brother, can you read Revelation 11.15, brother? Revelation 11.15. Revelation 11.15. Revelation 11.15. Revelation 11.15. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our lords, ah, and the kingdom of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Thank you. So here he says, the kingdoms of this world have become kingdoms of the Lord and his Christ. So the kingdom was transferred as soon as the seventh angel blew the trumpet. And he began to reign. So we are in that reign, dear brethren. You see, so Jesus spoke about the parable of, you see, and ten virgins. What did he say? Behold, I stand at the heart's door and knock. Jesus is already at the door. Not that he is coming. He has come and he is knocking at everybody's heart. If anybody opens the, their heart to Jesus, Jesus is going to come and give them strong spiritual food. So what strong spiritual food we are eating is actually given by our master. You see, in Matthew 25 chapter 10 verses parable we spoke now. We studied this one also. So what has happened? When Jesus uh, uh, carried you see, when the bridegroom carried, what happened? Uh, the whole uh, virgin, they all slept. But what happened? In the midnight, there was a cry. Behold the bridegroom. Read Matthew 25, uh, 6, brother. Sunita, sister. Matthew 25, 6. Can you read? And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Mm, behold the bridegroom. 
Midnight. Midnight means that is the period when the day changes. That is the time when 6,000 is ended and 1,000 is in a fresh started. And regarding the dates of second coming, we always study it's in the book of Daniel. Okay? Now, the nine coin. This is the very, very important coin. The last coin. What is it? Done? That is the thousand arena of Christ. You see, there are so many churches in uh, this world, but uh, not many of the churches know about the thousand arena of Christ. What is his purpose? What is Jesus going to come and do? But really, thousand years, everybody thinks that Jesus will come second advent. He's going to judge the whole world. And uh, for judging the whole world, you will take thousand years and send them to hell and heaven. No, dear brother. Jesus has no necessity to send the people to hell or heaven or punish them for the sins. If that was the case, why would he come and die on the cross? You see, so Jesus, when he's going to return, he's going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. So the judgment period is not a little period. It is for a period of thousand years. We studied about the thousand years. What will happen? When Jesus returns, he's going to rule for thousand years. All the dead will come back to life for you see, all the deaf ears uh, shall be opened. All the blind eyes shall be opened. Uh, they will all see the understanding of the word of God. Uh, they will all listen to the truth as you are all listening today. The same truth, you know, the whole world will learn in thousand years. Dear brother, the only one difference is that if you learn now, you are going to get the heavenly salvation. But then if you learn, the people will get the earthly salvation. So, in Christ's kingdom, what is the there will be a highway of holiness. There won't be any broad way. There won't be any narrow way. All the resurrected people will uh, live happily in Christ the kingdom. This was the coin, dear brethren, that was lost. Uh, you see, and uh, the Bible students were the one who found this coin. And as they found it, what did they tell? You see, first of all, they rejoiced. They called the friends. They told them to rejoice. What are friends? The Christian friends. So this is the good news, not only for us, but for our so many Christian friends. Imagine how many Christian friends do we have? Are we witnessing to them about the thousand years? Are we telling them about the lost coin and telling them to rejoice and be happy? Shortly, his visible kingdom shall be established on earth. Are we telling to our neighbors? Neighbors with not other religion, other people. You see, really. You know, if somebody dies in their family, you say you can't comfort them. But uh, just visit them after a few days and comfort them by telling them the truth. Uh, you see, it is not necessary that they should believe Jesus now. Tell them that God has given them an opportunity. There is a time for them. You see, shortly, all the people will dead will come back to life. And God will give them the opportunity to understand God then. They will all live happily together. You know, just speak and see this truth. Is really a joyful truth for everybody. Different. That's what the woman did. She told, Rejoice with me, for I have found the lost coin. So, this is the main doctrine in the Bible which uh, all the coins are hung to or related. Okay? The last coin is second death. What is the second death? Brother, you are not about only one death. The second death is there. Yes, there are second death. There is a two death in the Bible. You see, what is second death? You know, second death means sinning willfully against God. You see, we are going to study this one in the coming days. You see, in very detail. You see, that who goes to second death? What are the qualifications for the second death? So, can the church go to second death? Or what will happen to the world? You see, the world will be given the truth. But uh, if the people don't obey the truth in uh, Christ's kingdom, they should be destroyed with everlasting destruction. That is the second death. So similarly now, after God giving us the truth, if you don't live as per the truth, you see, if you reject uh, all these things as lies and go back to the world, you see, that is the time that these will go to second death. Read Hebrews 6, chapter 4 to 6. Go for brother. Can you read Hebrews 6, chapter 4 to 6? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested of the heavenly gift 
and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. See, what does it say? One who had enlightened the first thing, eyes of foundation is being opened after learning this truth, taste of the heavenly gift, forgiveness of sins, made particles of the Holy Ghost, God has given the Holy Spirit. And tasted the good word of God. So many beautiful truths are there in the Bible. We have tasted all these things. Sir. And the powers of the world to come. Which is the world to come? Now we are living in the second world. The future world that is going to come. The third world. Jesus' kingdom. After doing all these things. Sir, if you leave all these things and go. What does it say? You see. They are actually crucifying themselves. Jesus Christ afresh and putting him into open shame. Dear them, we should not be of that class. We should be of a class which brings glory and honor and praise to God. We all like Jesus, no? Isn't it? We all want to please him, no? Yes. But uh, in the thousand years also, even after the truth is given to some people, some people really sin against God. Even after giving them the truth, binding of Satan, Satan, there are possibilities that they may go to second death also. Therefore, dear brethren, this is the 10 silver coins. Very, very important. We have all the 10 important doctrines in our mind, in our heart. We have faith on those things. It is the same way, you see, as David spoke. You see, David had a string, you see, a harp. And it had how many strings? 10 strings. Read, uh, Psalm 144 9. Psalm 144 9. Uh, Mullah sister, can you read Psalm 144 9? I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon the plastery and an instrument of ten string will I sing praises unto thee. Ah, instrument of ten strings, that was hard. Ten strings with the ten important uh, doctrines. We have seen this subject now. Rebecca marrying Isaac. You see, uh, Eliezer went to select uh, Rebecca. How many camels did he take? Uh, ten camels. Ten important doctrines in the Bible. Then, if we need to be the bride of Christ, if we want to be with our Lord and rule with Him, these 10 important doctrines are very, very important. You see, the word of God is perfect. You see, to convert a soul. That is the important doctrines. Now, tell me, which are 10 important doctrines? Which is the first coin? Who is going to tell? Which is the first coin? Everybody, are there? Creation, you know? creation of God. God. Very good, creation of God. Second coin. Anil Buddha, tell me, which is the second coin? Regard Sunita Star, which is the third coin? Ransom. Very good. Fourth coin. Promister, which is the fourth coin? Justification. Very good. Fifth coin. Muna Sister, which is the fifth coin? Consecration. Very good. Sixth coin. Gopal Brother, which is the sixth coin? Election. Then. Very good. Seventh coin. Amar Brother, which is the seventh coin? Okay, who can tell me which is the seventh coin? What is it about God? Yes, truth about God. Eight coin? Which is eight coin? Who can tell? 
Jesus Jesus second event. Are, what will brother Joel is answering? What happened? Brother Anil brother, Munna sister. Huh? Tell me, okay, which is the nine coin? We will not put it on the screen. Let me see who is going to tell the correct ninth coin, the last coin. Which is the ninth coin? Thousand year reign. Very good, sir. Thousand year reign of Christ. Which is joy for everybody. Okay. The last tenth coin. Which is the tenth coin? Second eighth. Very good, sir. So these are ten important coins which we need to keep in our mind. You see, to be pleasing to our Lord. Okay, the Lord uh, had his blessings uh, to these uh, words. Uh, so, we will meet uh, next uh, week, God willing. Any doubts, any questions, anybody?